Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just going to give it another minute just for everyone to join in who are in the waiting room. Thank you guys for taking the time to be here uh, to discuss this webinar. Okay, I think that we can go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're thrilled to welcome you to this insightful webinar where we will dive into the connection between employee engagement and volunteerism, uh, specifically uh, in the realm of STEM. Uh, today, we are accompanied by a distinguished panel of experts. Uh, each of these experts brings a wealth of knowledge and experience from their respective fields, and they are ready to share their insights on creating effective employee volunteer programs and the impact of these initiatives on organizations, employees, and the communities they serve. Uh, before we dive into this presentation, I'd like to first thank my colleague at STEM Connector, Ted Wells, as well as Jacqueline Berry at 3M for conceiving this project. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to the organizations who contributed to this report uh, within the case study section of this report. Also, before we dive into our rich panel discussion, first, I'd like to provide you all a brief overview of the report, Connecting Employee Engagement and Volunteerism. Uh, we recently released it at the beginning of September. Uh, I will discuss some key terms, project purpose, impact, and best practices provided from the literature. Then we will have a robust discussion with some of our contributing organizations who are featured as case studies uh, in the report as well. Uh, we hope that this discussion will provide you all here today in the audience an understanding of how leading STEM organizations successfully connect employee engagement and volunteerism. As we begin our journey, our first stop is understanding key terms. Beginning with employee engagement, this is the connection employees have with their work. It combines their physical and mental dedication, their cognitive alignment of and with the company's vision, their emotional connection to the organization. And this leads to increased confidence, creativity, security, and trust. Notice the words physical, cognitive, and emotional are bolded here in the slide. These three aspects are considered as the three dimensions of employee engagement. So they act together to build a comprehensive understanding of overall employee engagement. Next is corporate social responsibility or CSR. This is the idea that a business has a responsibility to the society that exists around it. This subsequently leads into various concepts like employee volunteering, Employee volunteering is an employee investing one's time or skills during a planned activity for a volunteer group under the sponsorship of one's organization. In alignment with employee volunteering, we have employee volunteer programs or EVPs, and these are planned managed efforts that seek to motivate and enable employees to effectively serve community needs through the leadership of their employer. Next, I want you all to imagine that employee engagement is like a thermometer. On the high end, we see thriving productivity, retention, customer satisfaction, and lower absenteeism. However, when the temperature drops, productivity and performance cool down, employee turnover increases, and customers aren't quite as satisfied, as well as absences begin to pile up. So here in the US in the last three to four years, we've seen varying temperatures on our employee engagement thermometer. In 2019, the US reached a record high ratio of actively engaged to disengaged employees of 2.7 to one. However, this has substantially declined. And in 2022, the ratio has went down to 1.8 to one, 
which is the lowest ratio of engaged to actively disengaged employees in the U.S. since 2013. Cooled employee engagement, also known as disengagement, has a detrimental effect on our workforce. And as of most recent updates, employees who are not engaged or who are actively disengaged cost the world $8.8 trillion in lost productivity, according to Gallup's State of the Global Workplace 2023 report. In addition to this, Gallup has found that since 2019, the engagement elements that have declined the most in the US are feeling cared about at work, opportunities to learn and grow, connection to the mission or purpose of the company, clarity of expectations, and opportunities to do what employees do best. So these concerns have really led organizations to consider innovative opportunities such as employee volunteerism. According to a report that looked at corporate social responsibility and its connection to employee volunteerism, specifically in Fortune's 100 Best Companies to Work For list, employee volunteerism provides both internal and external benefits. The internal benefits of employee volunteerism include employee motivation. This can be through meaningfulness, altruism. Skill development is also a benefit seen internally through role variety and relational and social task characteristics. And the last internal benefit that they identified was through employee satisfaction. And this is evidenced by reduced turnover, increased productivity and performance, organizational commitment and morale and team building. On the external side, external benefits of employee volunteerism include firm profitability. So this is seen through enhanced customer perceptions or customer loyalty within an organization. An external benefit is also reputation or image, and this is enhanced uh, through employee recruitment, employee retention, organizational culture, and overall brand equity. And the last external benefit identified was stakeholder engagement. And this is seen through positive community and shareholder relationships and legitimacy. In addition to the advantages of employee volunteerism to employees and organizations, volunteerism can have a profound impact on youth engagement, especially in STEM. Often EVPs for STEM organizations support education, and this allows employee volunteers to assume crucial roles as mentors, inspiring future generations. STEM mentors motivate mentees for STEM activities and increase their interest in STEM topics. EVPs that are focused on youth STEM engagement also support skill development. Research finds that STEM mentoring leads to greater STEM achievement for mentored students in comparison to their counterparts who lacked such opportunities, as well as students who have participated in STEM activities demonstrate enhanced science process skills. And finally, EVPs help promote diversity and inclusion. Employee volunteers from diverse backgrounds can serve as role models, and a study has found that STEM students from underrepresented groups value their mentors who they identify with on the basis of demographic similarity or shared values. Now, there are various ways that companies offer these EVPs. Companies can offer it through virtual volunteering, which was extremely prevalent in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, flexible scheduling, paid time off, dollars for doers, skills-based volunteering, which is in light of pro bono service or board leadership uh, opportunities. This is extremely prevalent in STEM organizations. Uh, other forms of employee volunteer programs include employee volunteer awards, company-wide volunteering days, team grants, incentive bonuses, volunteer sabbaticals, and various other offerings. So when looking at best practices, I split this into two categories, general best practices and best practices for EVPs that want to focus on youth STEM engagement. Generally speaking, uh, based on Points of Lights 2013, seven key practices of effective employee volunteer programs, these effective programs will one, have clear goals. They will then measure progress. These EVPs will also be integrated within the business. These EVPs will have clear support from leadership. These, leader, these EVPs will have uh, or be driven by strategic alliances. 
Uh, these EVPs will boost employee engagement and enthusiasm. And lastly, these EVPs will be focused on continuous improvement. For EVPs that want to focus on engaging youth, uh, a report that offers 15 ways to engage youth within companies provides the following practices and considerations. Programs should be culturally responsive. Expectations should be managed. Power differentials should be addressed. And oversight entities or third parties who might be more uh, well-versed in interacting with youth, such as nonprofits, should be involved. Now, lastly, opportunities for youth engagement through employee volunteerism can include uh, various different programs, such as internships, leadership programs, mentorship programs, and youth labs. Many of these initiatives, we will hear more about from our panelists uh, as they incorporate those into their employee volunteer programs that engage youth. So now I'd like to turn it over to our lovely panelists who have taken the time today to speak about strategies that we can use to connect employee engagement and volunteerism in STEM. I want to thank you to our panelists and briefly introduce you all, as well as provide you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves. Thank you, Nicole Evans, the National Director of Partnerships at STEM Next Opportunity Fund, Rhonda Hamm, the Global Academics Relation Leader at Corteva AgriScience, Stacy Zaya, the Assistant Director of Tech Community Outreach at Northwestern Mutual, Brittany Chambers, the Corporate Social Responsibility Program Manager at Verizon, and Sarah Link, the Director of Social Impact at Verizon. Thank you ladies for your time here today. Uh, I'd like to first allow you all the opportunity to introduce yourselves as well. So just stating your organization and your connection to today's webinar, beginning with Nicole. Hi, I'm Nicole Evans. Thanks for having me. Uh, we love belonging to STEM Connector, so always excited to see your awesome work in action. I'm here today, STEM Next is a national nonprofit organization and we have a great need for STEM volunteers across the after school and summer programs that we work with. So excited to participate in today's conversation. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Stacy. Hi, everyone. And yes, I um, echo that gratitude to STEM Connector for putting this together, um, the research paper and all the work, Jessica, that you and the team have done uh, in this work and sharing it with the network across the STEM ecosystem. So great to be here today, Stacey Zaya. Um, I lead our tech community outreach programs for Northwestern Mutual. We're headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I sit within our Northwestern Mutual Foundation team. My priorities really within that tech community outreach are in that K through 12 space, um, but I also support initiatives across the greater Milwaukee STEM ecosystem um, as it relates to our Milwaukee Tech Hub and getting our employees engaged as well in some of the, the work that's going on from a wider greater Milwaukee region. So excited to be here today. And of course, at the cornerstone of all of it is the engagement of our volunteers. So excited to talk about that more today. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, Rhonda. Hi, everyone. I'm Rhonda Ham. I am at Corteva AgriScience. I am the Global Academic Relations Leader and so what does that mean? I describe my role as K through gray education and outreach. So K through 12 university relations, as well as employee engagement, um, which is the reason we're all here today. Um, so thank you to STEM Connector for putting together the report. Um, I've learned a lot from that and hope to implement some of that. And so hopefully some of the comments that you hear today will also be helpful in getting you started if you haven't, and um, maybe even making it even better for the programs that we all have started. So I can't wait to learn from the panel um, as well as hopefully answer some of your questions. Thank you, Rhonda. Yes, today's uh, this opportunity is very exciting. So looking forward to the panel discussion. Now I'd like to turn it over to Brittany. Thanks, Jessica. And hi, everyone. Excited to be here with you all. My name is Brittany Chambers, and I sit on Verizon's Corporate Social Responsibility team, supporting some of our programmatic initiatives, one Verizon Innovative Learning and the other Verizon Community Forward. So really excited to hear how we are making uh, volunteerism live and active in those programs alongside my colleague here, Sarah. And just also really excited to learn a lot of insights from uh, our fellow panelists, as well as you 
all through the chat feature. Um, so just really uh, looking forward to seeing what we can take away from this conversation to make some of our supports to our local communities better and to help uh, enlighten one another. So I'll with that, I'll hand it to Sarah. Thanks, Brittany. It's so great to be here. Sarah Link from Verizon. I lead our volunteerism program as well as strategic partnerships under Rose Kirk on the CSR team. And very excited to be here today to learn from each of you as well. I was so inspired by the report that had come out recently from some connectors. So uh, excited to continue the conversation. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. And uh, let's just go ahead and jump into this first question. This is a question for each and every one of you. So how did your organization first recognize the potential of connecting employee engagement and volunteerism? Feel free to start. Anyone can uh, just jump forward. All right, I'll start, I guess. Um, so I think it's been known for quite a while, right, in the literature that these two things are linked um, and have a lot of business outcomes that people are looking for. Um, but I think what's maybe different from what we did at Corteva AgriScience is it was really listening to employees of how do they want to be engaged? What do they want to do? What are they passionate about? What do we have the expertise in-house to do? Um, and not just to do, but to do well and maybe set ourselves apart a little bit um, from what others are offering. And so I think that's really one of the secret sauces, let's say, of what we've been able to develop at Corteva AgriScience is that it was really employees coming and saying, these are the kinds of things we want to do. And then the business helping us figure out how do we empower our employees to actually take those forward and create those programs and give them opportunities to lead. Um, because it doesn't always have to come from, you know, a top-down approach. Um, it can really be bottom-up. And so we've found some great successes with our Corteva Grows Science Outreach, Corteva Grows Green Space Teams, and our Corteva Grows Food Security Teams by exactly that, having them engage in spaces that they're really passionate about and building their own programs around what they want volunteerism to look, or, look like and how they want to be engaged. Absolutely. Thank you, Rhonda. I think that looking at what is important to the employees is a critical aspect that sometimes organizations fall short. So I appreciate that you guys are focused on that. And Sarah, how did you all recognize this at Verizon? Yep. So for many, many years, we had a very engaged workforce who was out volunteering in communities. But what we found was that there wasn't a central place for people to go if they were looking for volunteer opportunities. It was very business specific. And people would find out about it through emails or word of mouth, but there wasn't a specific platform or portal for for people to go for people to go to. So that was one thing that was missing. The other thing was our company back in 2019 um, was reframing its corporate social responsibility strategy to focus on digital inclusion climate protection, and human prosperity. Thinking about those assets that we as a business were able to make a positive impact on society. And so with that, we created the strategic volunteerism program as a clear way for our employees to be able to take action against our social responsibility strategy. So that was really the primary focus in addition to what Rhonda was saying about engaging with our employees' talents and skills, um, but providing a real clear way for our employees to take action for our res social responsibility strategy. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. And Stacy. how did your organization at Northwestern Mutual, how did you guys recognize the potential of this connection? Uh, absolutely. So some commonalities to that Sarah and Rhonda have shared, but definitely I think Right. As we've seen um, over the past, um, you know, decade, several years. Right. We've really seen um, people sharing how much they want to be connected to companies. Right. So I think as generations continue to come into our companies, we know that they want to feel connected to the work and volunteerism and that employee engagement is a way to be able to to help to capture that and help to make our you know, help our employees feel engaged. One thing that we have really been striving for is making sure that we're connecting our employees to the pillars of our foundation. And so making sure that they're helping to make an impact in the work that we're doing, whether it's in our neighborhoods. Um, we have a childhood cancer initiative as well. 
Um, and we also, of course, focus in that education space. And then with, of course, our community, our hometown of Milwaukee. And so making sure that we're providing those offerings to support the needs of our partners. And so, so a combination of listening to our employees and what they're looking for, but also listening to what our partners' needs are. And so that we can fulfill that need in the community to our partners. And in that way, our employees are feeling engaged in the community and really seeing the impact that they're having um, in the communities where they live and work. And so I think that has been definitely a benefit for us to make sure that we're aligning that strategy. One thing too, is that we've been getting a lot of our leaders coming to us asking for employee engagement. That's been something very new to us. And so I think that that's really that ripple a ripple effect that we're starting to see and our leaders starting to see that that employee engagement helps with that morale in their teams. And so they might do a volunteer project together. And so it used to be a little bit of one-offs <laughs> of people finding an organization maybe that they knew of or that they were connected to. And now they're coming to us because they're seeing the benefit that we can help um, to be able to pull those activities together and align it with the company's business impacts. That's awesome, Stacey. Uh, and Nicole, I know that you're positioned as a, a national nonprofit, so you definitely have a unique perspective on that connection between employee engagement and volunteerism. Can you speak to how STEM Next has kind of realized that connection? Absolutely. I love hearing how all of you have found your way to these employee engagement strategies and what's working within your companies and cultures. As a nonprofit, we're really interested in that youth engagement and youth outcomes piece that Jessica talked about at the beginning of her presentation. And what I love about this research report is the way that it lifts up best practices for those youth engagement um, tenants. And so when we think about making sure that the future of STEM careers is even more diverse and inclusive and equitable, we know it's really important for young people to see STEM professionals who look like them. This helps to build that sense of belonging and specifically foster a STEM identity. When we work with our corporate partners, we're always excited to be able to bring those employees into our programs and let young people hear directly from them how amazing STEM careers are, the opportunity for hands-on innovation, all the cool things that get to happen at work. Um, but then also for young people to sort of have that that sense of I can do this because seeing is belonging and becoming. And for these young people, it can really change the trajectory for their STEM learning. Uh, Nicole, those are wonderful points that you uh, brought out, the importance of belonging and really just seeing that these are opportunities that are available for them. They are attainable. And just having that connection with employee volunteers that mentorship uh, aspect is especially important. Uh, so kind of thank you all for your insights. Uh, building upon this, um, uh, the inception of employee volunteer programs, I'd like to turn it over to you, Sarah. Uh, could you walk us through the process that Verizon underwent to craft its employee volunteer program? Sure. So, um, you know, I had mentioned a little bit earlier about um, connecting it to our social responsibility strategy. And for many years, our social responsibility program had focused on education and our Verizon Innovative Learning Program, which Brittany and her team leads. And we had a lot of experience of seeing the needs on the ground, the needs for young people to connect with mentors, the needs for um, young people to also be able to see their potential um, with professionals. So we knew that there was an opportunity for the roles that our employees could play. Um, when we decided to launch the program, um, we wanted to, one, ensure that we had support from leadership. So internally, we had support from our CEO, as well as his direct reports, that this was something that they wanted to build. Um, but we also knew that we needed to build a grassroots approach because our small team off to in one part of the business was not going to necessarily be able to reach hundreds of thousands of employees that are based all across the country and some outside the US as well in all different business units and frontline employees. So we created um, a champion program that was built of 
employees across the company that would be able to, one, understand our goals of the program and be able to both create volunteer opportunities and uplift volunteer opportunities that were going to be in, in our portal, um, which brings me to another uh, aspect of building the program. Um, we created our own um, uh, technology platform that would be able to host volunteer opportunities on the system um, so that employees could go on 24 seven to be able to find relevant volunteer opportunities. But that brings me to what were those opportunities that we were putting on the portal? And that was probably one of the most important aspects of the program. How were we gonna create a volunteer program that was going to benefit our nonprofit partners and benefit the communities and beneficiaries that they were serving? And we know that for a long time, corporate volunteer programs can sometimes have a bad rap. Sometimes if they're not strategic, you know, you have large, large groups of employees that might be wanting to volunteer with very good intentions, but they might not necessarily be able to deliver what a nonprofit needs or what a community needs. Um, it just might need to fit into a specific time frame. So what we did was we went out to nonprofits across the country and outside the US and ran an RFP to better understand what needs did they have and how could employee volunteers meet those needs. And with that whole process, it was very iterative and we were able to learn a lot from our partners on the things that were, would help them, the things that they did not need. And then we also wanted to be able to help to support a resource at their organization that would be able to access our portal to be able to upload those, num those volunteer opportunities for our employees. So it was somewhat tactical in the sense of really getting underneath what those volunteer opportunities were going to be, um, and then being able to serve them up and to our employees in a way that was relevant for them. Um, and then all of that was capped off with uh, setting a, a very large and ambitious goal where we decided that by 2025, we wanted to contribute 2.5 million volunteer hours towards the areas of digital inclusion, climate protection, and human prosperity. So setting that big goal with a very goal-oriented organization a lot has allowed us over the last several years to be able to set smaller goals on an annual basis, break it down by business unit, and be able to report back on what our employees are doing, as well as the impact that they're making in their communities. Thank you, Sarah. I, I love that you kind of closed with that goal that you all have by 2025. Uh, really, the importance of setting goals for these employee volunteerism, that's one of the, that's the first uh, effective strategy that was highlighted by Points of Light's report. And that's a major theme that I'm seeing throughout of uh, various leading STEM organizations, their employee volunteer programs. So I, I think that that's a wonderful goal. And I definitely agree that you all will uh, likely be able to attain it by 2025. So I'm excited to see what's uh, to come with Verizon. And uh, speaking of that, I just want to chime in with Brittany. Uh, do you mind, or Brittany, can you uh, describe the connection uh, of this employee volunteer program uh, to Verizon's CSR programs? Yes, and thanks for that question, Jessica. And we are uh, excited to be uh, striving towards that goal, and we're doing well so far. So excited to see how things continue to evolve. Um, in terms of our connection to our CSR programming, we realize that there's an opportunity to connect to external organizations and some of their uh, needs. So we've done a lot of great work around that. Even as a CSR team, um, I think back to some of our major CSR uh, convenings and we've built bikes, we've built little STEM libraries, we've uh, you know, helped uh, put together uh, wheelchairs for those uh, of need and, and more. So we've done so many different types of activities. But the one I want to zoom in on is the uh, Little STEM Library, which actually happened relatively recently. And so uh, as a, a manager of our Verizon Innovative Learning STEM Achievers Program, which is a summer program that operates three or four weeks uh, in the summer for students nine to five at 45 college campuses across the country. And then we have some open houses, both in the fall and the spring. Uh, we then said, hey, it'd be amazing to create uh, nooks at some of those locations where we can have a, 
a book library and be able to support students with gaining more resources in addition to our uh, leadership and uh, volunteer mentors, but also through uh, some of those assets in the community. So our CSR team got together and crafted and decorated these beautiful STEM libraries. And then I actually have the map here, which was funny. I pulled it out and we placed them in a few cities across the country and then put a link and talked about seizing the hour and uh, creating more, uh, magnifying more opportunities like this. We've also done a few other activations with some of our local teams. So uh, we, uh, this year alone, had over 600 hours with across 50 plus members of our local teams who went out, visited schools, shared their stories, mentored some of the students, um, and have even found that not only have our middle schoolers at these summer programs benefit, benefited from that mentorship, but also some of our instructors and uh, teaching assistants who are college students. We've had some go on to uh, become Verizon employees from some of that impactful work. So to see that uh, connection point, to see that pipeline of opportunity existing across our K through 12 space, but also into some of the adults who are then, um, you know, increasing their interest in STEM, maybe not necessarily at Verizon, but overall benefiting to by tangent from our students learning in the programs has been um, an amazing asset to see. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, yes, it's amazing to see all the wonderful work that you all are doing at Verizon. Uh, now I'd like to move it on to Stacy at Northwestern Mutual. Stacy, could you share with us some of the key components that, in your opinion, every effective employee volunteer program should possess? Absolutely. Um, and I heard Sarah mention about getting her CEO, their CEO support as they launch their volunteer um, initiative. And I think that that is a critical component. And one of the first components is that leadership buy-in. And not just from the CEO, but all the way through your organizations to direct managers. Um, when we're asking employees to participate in volunteerism, we need to make sure that the manager support is there and that they're really you know, building that culture of support um, within the organization to be able to go out and do this volunteerism. Um, so one thing at Northwestern Mutual, and I know at many companies, and I, I so applaud the the progress I feel like that companies have made in giving that volunteer time off for employees. I think that that's very important because it really kind of gives that stamp of, uh, of permission and approval to be able to go out and do that. But again, I still think, right, that that management support is very important. Um, for example, with our STEM programs, um, we lead a mini a tech mini camp and internship program over the over the summer and th during the three weeks of the mini camp we have instructors coming in on a regular basis and that not only is during that three weeks but all the preparation in advance so we need managers and we go actually ourselves for that big of an ask to the managers to make sure that they understand the commitment of the employee and that we have the support. And then also making sure that we can reinforce the development for that employee. So I think that it ties back, especially in the STEM space of how it's helping to develop that employee and their skills in tech specifically for us in the work that we're doing and that leadership development for the employee as well. So that's a large commitment that we have um, that we know that we need that manager support um, and buy-in for a program like that. I also think a critical piece to any type of employee engagement program is making sure that you have diverse offerings for your employees to volunteer. So those could be one day or maybe for a couple hours on a day, or maybe they are some of these longer term um, opportunities where someone's mentoring a student over a course of time and participating that way. With that um, mini camp program that I mentioned, we have a buddy program. We pair all of our 15 high school students that participate in our tech mini camp and internship over the summer with a one-on-one -on -one buddy. That's a longer um, experience for the, in, uh, for the employee. But again, some employees, depending upon their time, right, depending upon how much um, they're able to give, we want to make sure that we have a multitude of offerings. So it's really kind of thinking of a really wide menu of offerings, not only of the type of volunteering, whether it's skills-based volunteering and allowing employees to maybe put their tech skills for us to use in like our tech for good, where we're having employees help nonprofit organizations with some of their um, with some of their needs, or a one-day event where they're volunteering. Um, where we're doing STEM activities at like our local science center or at a school I, and making sure too that 
you have weekend offerings and evenings and daytime so that again you're trying to match the needs so that hopefully no one can come back and say you know that there wasn't something for them hopefully they can find something from that menu of offerings i also think that recognition is very important and i think that it's really important you can do it in many ways right i mean it does not have to be real formal and you don't have to be presenting awards or thing like that it can be a thank you right a simple thank you email copy that employee's manager especially if there's something that you call out to be very specific did they help come in a little early to help you set up for the event did they stay longer did you see them connect with an uh with a child for instance at a stem event in a way that helped to you know have something click for that child that you can call out in that email so and again making sure that their manager is aware because those are all valuable um, pieces of, you know, that gratitude for an employee. Um, and so I think, you know, those are great things. We have, um, some of you may have like, I, I know other companies have a Bravo system where you can recognize people um, in a Bravo system and you can even award points and things that they can be used. But again, I think not overthinking, right? And just taking that little, um, or a personal hand note, um, we have actually started offering to, we do, now that we're a little bit further in our journey, um, we have a volunteer recognition program um, that we do, you know, that we started in April during volunteer month. And so um, employees can, we're starting to allow employees to either nominate themselves or nominate others for an award. Um, and then they get that recognition. And then also we have the employee select a charity of their choice to be able to give a donation um, in, in their name. And I know other companies that do do recognition programs like that. So again, it can be a host of it. I think just key pieces, just make sure that you're recognizing and showing that that gratitude to your employees. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's great advice. So leadership is super important. Having diverse program offerings is very important. And the last thing you mentioned, Stacy, recognition is extremely important. So thank you, Stacy. Uh, and turning to you, Nicole, back to you, Nicole, uh, how can nonprofit organizations really position themselves as suitable partners for corporations that are looking to enhance their engagement through volunteerism? That's a great question. I think some of my, my fellow panelists have hit on some great themes that I'll sort of weave into my answer. I loved what Sarah said about employee volunteers who have really good intentions, but may just need a little bit of support, making sure that the way they show up is just as effective and awesome for young people as they want it to be. So we always recommend that the programs we work with have a structured experience that helps the volunteer understand the expectations when they show up as well as helping the program define um, how they're gonna set up the experience to be a really high quality um, moment for the volunteer to be able to really give back and get what they want out of it. I also love Stacy talking about having a diverse offering set for folks so that they can look at a menu and decide how volunteering can fit into their work-life community balance in the best way. Many of the programs that we work with have a tough time with things like a done in a day event because they don't always need a large amount of manpower in just one moment unless they have a big event or um, manual labor is always awesome. Building building bikes is a favorite. Um, so thinking about some of the items that were specifically mentioned in the report is particularly helpful here for nonprofits. So evaluating, for instance, virtual volunteering opportunities as well as skills-based volunteering across the after school and summer learning ecosystem, there's a great need for really talented individuals to come in and help to build capacity in targeted ways. So if your HR team has some awesome expertise, they might be willing to share with local programs who are structuring their summer internship program for high school students, or they have experience on the marketing side, helping to recruit folks from the community to make sure that the people in our programs are just as diverse as the future of STEM should be. And these are great ways to give your employees a way to flex their, their muscles, the skills they're so good at and why they're such a fabulous part of your company, but also help the program to fill real needs and not just create volunteer slots for the sake of servicing volunteers. So as programs are thinking through what they need, uh, we encourage them to focus on some of those capacity pieces, take advantage of these really fabulous trends towards skill-based and virtual volunteering, 
and think a little bit outside the box. The direct youth engagement is always incredibly meaningful for volunteers, but it's not the only opportunity to make a very real difference in the ecosystem. Nicole, I think that that's a fabulous point that you ended. That's not the only way to impact the STEM ecosystem. And with that perspective, Nicole, on a related note, can you elaborate on how corporate volunteerism fosters stronger outcomes in STEM fields? Yeah, absolutely. I think the big outcome that we usually link to the STEM role model and mentor piece that really comes to life through corporate volunteerism is probably that STEM identity. We partner with Harvard's Payer Institute to use the Common Instrument Suite across the programs we work with. And what this evaluation research has told us is that STEM identity and that sense of belonging is a huge predictor in future STEM performance. So when we help young people meet mentors and role models in STEM that look just like them, it helps them uh, understand the future career trajectories, both for themselves, but also for their peers. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, and uh, back to you, Rhonda, I'm interested to know uh, what tangible impacts have you observed since implementing your employee volunteer program uh, internally and externally? And Rhonda, this is a question for you, but I think that all of you all here on the panel today can answer this question as well, but I would like to start with you, Rhonda. Yeah, so uh, we actually did a, a little study um, with a university, a group of university students to actually measure some of the impacts from our employee standpoint. So um, it's always a challenge to get data around some of these programs, especially if you're working with youth, right? There's a lot of challenges with anyone under 18 and the data that you can get from them and how you properly use that data. So that's a little bit more difficult to understand those challenges, um, but our employees were easier. So that's where we started and saying, okay, we wanted to get some feedback on what do people think? Why are they mo motivated to volunteer? What are they looking for in volunteer programs? And so um, within that survey that we did, we kind of took two groups of people, those that were already volunteers and those that had not volunteered to try to understand what would get somebody across that threshold to become a volunteer. And so we offer a lot of resources to support, um, including, you know, activities that they can sign up for. So those are already identified. There are trainings. So if you're uncomfortable and like, I don't know, I've never dealt with youth before. How do I, what do I say? How do I say we have some training around that? Um, and so, in asking those questions of employees, um, the both volunteers and non-volunteers said that they really wanted to invest in the communities in which they lived. That was super important to them is to invest back and give that time back. Then the, the second level one um, answer was around, they wanted to focus on, and this was more slightly leaned toward those that were already volunteers, um, focus on promoting STEM. Um, so those STEM careers and STEM education, um, that was motivating for our current employees that are volunteers. For the non-volunteers, their second one was really they wanted to give back to communities in need. So not just their community, but also those that maybe needed some more assistance, help, or were looking for what are those communities that really would have the greatest impact. And so with that, we kind of considered, okay, what can we do and who are we partnering with? Are we partnering with the right organizations? And so that's where we kind of, that's the internal piece. From the external piece, we went back and said, you know, these are what we're able to do and give. These are our strategies. These are the things that we do well and are part of Corteva and our backbone as a company. How can we help you? And so, again, kind of going back to what the um, other panelists have said around skill based, right, volunteering activity-based volunteering. And so one of the things that we really wanted to do was how can we be a help? We don't want to be a hindrance, right? We don't want to cause somebody more work, but how can we take some of that work off the table to make the biggest impact? And so um, really, I think that's one of the things that we've seen and, and the tangible impacts of that have been, one, our employees are meeting the goals that they really wanted to get out of a program like this. Um, but then the organizations that we're partnering with are also getting the skills and the talent that they need in the timeframes that they also need. And so um, 
you know, within each of those, right, we could go through individual activities and say, here's the tangible impacts on the students. And um, we have a story, I, I think you might ask it later. So maybe I'll keep that one for later of sharing the actual story of, um, you know, kind of what, it, what are the outcomes of some of those. Um, but yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Rhonda. And yes, I do plan to ask about some anecdotes that you might have from your employee volunteer programs. Uh, but before that question, uh, just one more question for you, Stacey. Uh, since, since the introduction of volunteerism, have you noticed any changes in employee retention rates or overall job satisfaction within your organization? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think with this question, you know, as I thought about it, I mean, truly it's it's a very hard thing to um, to really judge and to be able to actually like pull data around. I think one thing that we have to think about is that we're, while we can't like specifically claim retention rates because of us or attraction rates, we, we can feel confident that we are a part of that strategy and that we're a part of that fabric of bringing um, employees to Northwestern Mutual or keeping them at Northwestern Mutual. And a lot of that comes from testimonials. I really feel like having employees share their stories, having employees share that they appreciate what Northwestern Mutual is doing in that employee engagement sp space. So I do think, you know, some of the surveying that we've done of our employees that have engaged, we have seen um, high marks from them of the skill development. So it might be increasing their technical skills. Employees have also shared that they see volunteerism as something that's helping to grow their professional network. Um, so they see that professional development, the networking, right, kind of stepping outside maybe of their comfort zone. Maybe they're not quite as active in other groups, but that that um, volunteering has really helped them build that network and build that confidence in public speaking and really um, building on that, those professional development skills. So again, I think there's a lot of work and I, I, I like this question because I think it's, it's good for us to be open and transparent about it, that it's, it's a hard thing to, um, to report on, right? And it's a hard thing to really say that because of this volunteerism program, this employee stayed, unless they come up to you and openly share that. Um, but again, I think that it's all, that we play a part in it and we play a critical part in it. Um, and I think that data and, and such that you've seen and, and others does show that, and it's really a key piece. And for us too, lately, I think that manager piece of managers coming to us and saying, I want to do um, a volunteer team outing and really recognizing the impact that they, that can have on helping to build their team and build their team dynamics. Absolutely. I, I think that those are valuable insights, Stacey. And yes, like you mentioned, it's not something that can be easily measured, but seeing uh, employees maybe come up to you and say, hey, this volunteer program really made me feel good about uh, me working within this organization. Those anecdotes are always super important. So that lends ourselves to my next question, which is um, I, I would like to learn some success stories uh, that you all have. Uh, starting with you, Brittany, can you can you share any moments where employees through volunteering have maybe significantly impacted a young person's interest or pursuit in STEM? Yeah, thanks for that. And we actually have some beautiful um, stories that we've published online about uh, children who either uh, one was working with their mother at a school and she went on to do uh, some work leveraging some of the tech in our spaces that created these beautiful opportunities for um, uh, our frontline workers. And just to see uh, the influence there that a student was able to have by way of support through some of the, vo the volunteer mentorship, uh, working with some of our frontline worker, uh, well, learning through some of the work with some of our frontline workers was inspiring. Um, we also had some amazing experiences uh, during the pandemic where students were just creating some in innovative ideas to create solutions during that time frame uh, for things that we hadn't thought of before. More. So just seeing some of that also take shape and form has been uh, rather fascinating and enlightening as well. So I think those are two things that just stick out in my mind. Um, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brittany. And Rhonda, earlier, I know that you were going to provide an anecdote. So can you provide any anecdotes of uh, the positive influence of volunteering on students or just Corteva AgriScience in general? 
Yeah. So I have a great story. Um, and this story is kind of combines a couple of our volunteer programs. So we have um, our Corteva Grows uh, food security. And so in Indianapolis, where our headquarters is, we have what we call a harvest for hunger garden. And so employees tend this garden space, the produce that is harvested goes into local food pantries. So we have that connection. Um, but we also use that garden as an opportunity for students to learn. So we'll bring students out to the garden to help with the chores that need to be done in the garden, but then also learn about where their food comes from, what, what is the importance of pollinators, how does STEM engage in that garden space. And we had a group of students that had come out and this one particular um, employee, um, the student raised their hand after the tour kind of was over and he said, um, Mr. Brock, can can you show me your plot? Because each employee has a plot. And this employee was panicked and said, oh my gosh, I haven't weeded that plot. It looks terrible. And this kid wants to see mine. Um, and he said, yep, sure, let's go. And really the student was trying to get him separated from everyone else because he walked over that plot and he said, thank you because my family has benefited from the food that you have. And now I really understand where this comes from and the people behind it. I mean, wow, what an impact, right? That this one instance in this one program that we have on this one student, not just this particular student, but their whole family, right? And now that connection between giving back and the fact that this student had a chance to come back. And so his hand will be in the next food that is harvested and in, in at that pantry, right? So it kind of comes full circle. And so um, I think we never really understand the full impact of some of what we have until we have an instance like that where someone happens to share um, the impact that we've had. And that's why we do what we do, right? Is to have that impact. Even if it's just one student, we made a difference for that one student's family, right? And so um, those are the instances that make this all worth our our day jobs of struggling and getting through all the details to make that happen. Absolutely. I think that story is wonderful, uh, Rhonda, and it's very heart heartwarming as well. Uh, just that one connection with that student between uh, the employee uh, really, it can change the trajectory of that student's life. So that's super important. And speaking of students and them being the future of the STEM ecosystem, um, Brittany and Stacy, uh, could you both speak to where do you all see the future of employee engagement and volunteerism headed, especially in the context of the STEM ecosystem? All right, I can kick us off. Um, so one thing, you know, and I know it's come up um, from a STEM perspective, I think is just making sure um, I know that we've done all done a lot of work in making sure that we're connecting our employees, connecting our mentors that um, look like our students. We serve um, our students that we're serving in our Northwestern Mutual Partner Schools are coming from much more high economic need communities. And so we want to make sure that our students feel connected, that they can see themselves in a role at Northwestern Mutual or in a future career path. And so I think one thing that we want to keep doing, we've we've made progress, but we want to keep making sure that we're doing those, that intentional work, for instance, with our employee resource groups. I think there's a lot of opportunity um, for us to connect our employee resource groups with our partner schools to be able to bring that connection. We've started to see some success. Um, Sarah was talking about their ambassadors and kind of the work that you're doing right with having leads with different programs and things. We're starting to see success with that. Um, more partnerships that we're doing with our women in tech group. Um, we are doing a specific mentoring program at one of our high schools um, with 15 mentors that are going out um, once a month and working with the girls at one of our schools. So again, I think just making sure that we're continuing to make those connections to mentors because I do think that that's very much key. And I know we've all made a lot of progress and we've all been focused on it. Um, I think you know, sadly, I, I don't, I, we, we do still have a lot of work to, to go um, in that space because we've definitely made progress. Um, but I know that we, for instance, for the mini camp that I was talking about, we still do not see um, enough girls, for example, um, applying for our mini camp program. And so we need to put an emphasis in that space. So I think really continuing to identify those gaps and continuing to address those gaps as much as we possibly can. Yeah, happy to jump in and appreciate all of that was shared, Stacey. I think 
Uh, one of the things that we're noticing more and more um, is the great added benefit conversations like these have in the STEM ecosystem and STEM spaces, uh, as well as mentorship. I think that no matter what, uh, at our core, we all remember that one mentor or person who has inspired us or influenced some of our trajectory. And so being able to just see, I think, an image of uh persons in similar positions that we may have been in in the past now uh, ascending and doing well in those spaces just helps students coming up. One of the most uh, or the biggest indicators of the successfulness of our program and what students found most interesting was learning from uh, our employees and learning from volunteers. So uh, just to see that insight was very powerful for us on the strength of the program. I think also too, um, there's something really strong to be said about community um, and learning and growing in community. Um, and so I think volunteerism bodes that kind of a, a feeling of connectedness to a purpose, a value, a mission that uh, helps strengthen not only our employees, uh, you know, capacities and abilities at work, as many of you all shared, but also uh, that energy just automatically rubs off on students uh, who are interfacing with those teams uh, during that occasion. And there's something um, to be said about uh, the, the excitement that that brings and creates in an environment um, to make STEM possible. I know sometimes too, too for students, we're noticing environments where STEM instruction, uh, because of one teacher that wasn't so great or one facilitator or experience that went wrong in the class during an experiment with a classmate, uh, students sometimes are just completely turned off from uh, STEM or certain topics. And so helping to uh, kind of reverse some of that, fe those feelings, those sentiments by some of these opportunities, I think is one of our biggest areas of opportunity um, that, that I think as we continue in the volunteerism space in STEM, uh, we can continue to lean into rewriting some of those narratives just by way of how we engage in the space as volunteers. So uh, I think that's a huge one for me. Yeah, thank you, uh, Brittany and Stacy, uh, for those perspectives. And same question, but I did want to know uh, and call out the nonprofit perspective uh, with Nicole. Um, how or where do you see the future of employee engagement and volunteerism headed? It's a great question. I think from my perspective, probably two things. Uh, the first being that increasingly we're seeing on the nonprofit side, these programs connected to other business and policy priorities. So I'm always really excited when I hear that we're thinking not just about employee engagement through volunteerism, but also connecting the young people that are being engaged through that program into talent recruitment, into summer internships, into other experiences that can make sure we don't just spark STEM interest in young people, but we sustain it over time through repeated exposure, because that's what research tells us is the most effective. The second thing that I would probably predict is that it's going to be increasingly youth-centric and data-driven. I think both of those components really come to life in some of the case studies that y'all highlighted in the research report, so I'm really grateful for that. But we want to make sure that the volunteering is not just a great experience for employees keeps them plugged in at work, but that it actually makes a difference for the young people and the programs that they're working with. So I know my my co-panelists today have shared amazing examples of how they're really stress testing that internally and thinking about this holistically. But as we're measuring employee engagement, I think we're starting to get beyond just number of volunteers, number of hours, but really what what's the impact of this? Why does this matter? So um, those are probably my perspectives, just adding that, that nonprofit lens to what's already been shared. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Nicole, for that perspective. Um, well, I think that we are almost at time, but I do um, want to give our panelists, if there's any other perspectives that you all would like to share about what may be on the horizon for your organization in terms of employee engagement and volunteerism, just this last minute to share that. I just wanted to jump in just to follow on what Nicole was saying. And I think there were some questions in the chat as well about measuring impact. And that is something that is certainly a challenge, but it's something that we partner with a lot of the nonprofit organizations that we work with to think about how the volunteers are making an impact on things such as 
the sentiments of the uh, young people that are being impacted by the volunteers. So reporting an increased interest or confidence in STEM, um, thinking about increased skills and knowledge attained by interaction with them with the volunteers. Um, or the increased confidence, for example, from small business owners who might feel more or better positioned to succeed in a digital economy. So those are just some examples of some of the ways that we're thinking about how we're measuring impact. Some of that is through self-report, not always easy, but it's something that we're focused on and hoping to, to continue to improve upon. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah, for that closing perspective. I want to thank each and every one of you all for uh, your time here today uh, serving as panelists. I am I know that your perspectives have been incredibly insightful for our audience members. They were extremely engaged in the chat. Uh, as Ted Wells mentioned here in the chat as well, uh, please join us, uh, STEM Connector, next month for more conversations like this uh, at our STEM Innovation Forum. You can see it in the top of my screen here. It's October 19th and 20th in Denver, Colorado. Again, thank you to our panelists today. Uh, greatly appreciate your perspectives and contributions to the report and um, looking to see what's uh, in the future for employee engagement and volunteerism. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.